I've been wanting to make this video for a while now about Max Verstappen's father Jos. A lot have been said about this man and very little of it is positive. Some of the things that get repeated may have some merit, however a lot of it is done to hate on the Verstappens in general and because people love being ignorant. I did quite a bit of research for this video and Mark Hughes' book Unstoppable was a great help too. If you click this video for a sensational, exaggerated load of gossip about my fellow Dutchman Jos Verstappen, you can kindly click away and have a nice evening. I'm setting the record straight about Jos the boss. I'm Wimbo, here's 3 seconds to leave a like. Even in the Netherlands, Jos Verstappen is met with cynicism when talking about his career. A much heard comment is that he was more in the gravel than on the track and that he just wasn't very good. This is not true and if he'd been given the opportunity his boy Max had, things would have looked a lot different. Jos came from a humble background. His father Frans owned a scrapyard and came from a family of travelers. Some would call them gypsies or pikeys. He started karting when he was 8 years old and with the technical knowledge he had and a tenacious spirit, he made it to driving for professional teams until his big break came. Huub Rottengatter saw the combination of talent and the take no prisoners approach and wanted him in his cars. He was an instant success in the 90s, winning one championship after the other. This led to F3 driving for Van Amersfoort, who runs teams in F3 and F2 now, and eventually to F1. In 1994, Jos became the test and reserve driver for Benetton, and the idea was to slowly prepare him for that second seat. As it happened, the team's second driver, JJ Lito, had an accident and injured his neck, and that promoted Jos to the seat beside Michael Schumacher. That didn't work out very well. As we all know, Schumacher was the number one priority in that team, and it's been said that the two cars weren't the same. The lack of results stuck to Verstappen his whole career. Combined with his risky driving style, no competitive team wanted him anymore. His lack of experience caused mistakes, he wanted too much too quickly. He was thrown in the deep end way too fast and wasn't able to get accustomed to the sport like Max did years later. Because of that, he never had the chance to develop and received a name as a reckless driver, even if that was completely unfair and cruel. Because it was mostly due to the lack of experience and guidance, especially that last thing was missing at Benetton. He scored two podiums and 17 points, which made him the most successful Dutch driver at the time, until Max surpassed him. So I think that if Jos was given the time to prepare in a team with equal opportunities, his career would have been different. Kees van der Grint motorsport engineer for Bridgestone said about Jos Verstappen as a driver Jos was as good as Max in my opinion. One of the things people say to discredit Max Verstappen is that he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and was pampered by his millionaire father. Now I'm sure driving for backmarket teams paid better than what I'm making with my flower business, but I highly doubt that Jos Verstappen retired from F1 racing with hundreds of millions to his name. He could have chosen to do all kinds of other types of racing to make a living. He chose to train his son instead. He did compete in Le Mans and invested some money in real estate. He also tuned cars for young drivers and was coaching former Caterham driver Guido van der Garde. By that time his son Max was doing great in karting and Jos decided to give up his career and focus entirely on his kid. Now you must know that running in world championships karting is a very costly sport. Jos built the karts for Max but struggled to keep up with the professional teams. This led to Max Verstappen joining CRG supported by the Pex family. Now obviously if Jos Verstappen had a stroll like fortune that wouldn't have been necessary. If Max had been taken under someone's wing like Lewis Hamilton was by Ron Dennis then Jos wouldn't have struggled financially either. Jos made all these choices himself to keep matters in his own hands, to keep his independence. He didn't want his son to be forced into a situation that he was forced into himself. Now we don't have to feel sorry for Jos anymore because he's worth a load of money now. But at the time he struggled just like we all do at times. Okay people, I'm not going to sugarcoat this or gaslight you. Jos Verstappen has broken the law many times and has been in plenty of trouble with the police. I'm not asking you to forget that or pretend it didn't happen. However, 
I would like you to move on from things that have happened a long time ago. From what I can tell from interviews and what's written on the internet, Jos has changed after his two weeks of detention. That was his rock bottom. That is something that I understand as a recovering alcoholic. I'd like to think that I've done enough to be cleared of the things I did in those dark days. And I feel the same about Jos Verstappen. Is he still a man with an enormous temper? Yes, he still has that. And it sometimes pops up when things don't go the way it's supposed to go for Max. I'd also like to point out that he came from a pretty notorious family with all kinds of issues when Jos grew up. His parents had a messy divorce too. And I can't help believing that someone's upbringing plays a big part in how one composes himself later in life. This is not an excuse, just perhaps a mitigating circumstance. People pretend to be compassionate when bashing Jos Verstappen and his past. I'd like people to use that compassion to see how well Jos is doing right now. How he built himself up from rock bottom to the decent person he is now. A big misconception about Jos Verstappen and his enormous drive is that it's believed he's a real villain and hated in the paddock. This is far from the truth. Despite being the way he is, he made loads of friends who vouch for him when needed. From Guido van der Garde, who used to share a room with young Max during his karting career, to seven-time world champion Michael Schumacher. For some reason, people get over his raw attitude and appreciate him for always shooting straight. What you see is what you get. No bullshit. In this day and age, anyone in the spotlight needs to walk on eggs not to offend people. But the Verstappens don't do PR. They don't gaslight. It doesn't make them popular. But remember what the late Bob Marley said. The problem is people are being hated when they are real and are being loved when they are fake. Before I reveal the number one misconception about Jos Verstappen, I want to ask the people that made it this far <laughs> to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It was about a year ago when I started making really bad videos. I still managed to gather a lovely group of people in my community that watch my videos on a regular basis. I'm so close to 1k subscribers now and with one little click you can help me reach it. And then I can join the YouTube Partner Program. This will open up the door to lots of new features that I want to try out. Thanks a million! Now this is a big one too, because even the most loyal Max fans are horrified by Jos Verstappen's methods to mold Max into the best F1 driver the world has ever seen. Terms like child abuse are yelled too often, and that's something that also goes too far in my opinion. I want to try and place some context on the tutelage Max received from his father. The first thing is that Max wanted desperately to race and wanted to be the best. None of this would have been possible if he packed it in when he was in his adolescent years. It is a known fact that parents of sports people play a huge role in the success of their offspring. I also honestly think that kids who become gymnasts have it a lot worse than what Max ever had. Jos Verstappen sacrificed what was left of his career to push his son to the highest level possible. Spent all his money on the best equipment and spent days tinkering with the setup of that kart. Jos and Max traveled all over Europe with a van from race to race and I'd like to see more appreciation for that. Max didn't join a junior team that looked after everything for him. Jos Verstappen made it very clear what a monumental effort goes into a proper F1 career with the knowledge he gathered from his own failed career. Young Max didn't get over the top praise from his father as he wanted him to be level headed. This is something that the three time world champion still is. He's never extremely happy or extremely down. This is why mind games don't work on him. Of course, the story of Max being left behind at a petrol station shocked people. I can picture a tiny little boy all alone at an abandoned petrol station crying. The reality is that Max was 15 at a massive four court petrol station and had a mobile phone. His mom was five minutes behind him and Jos came back after 10 minutes. Jos knew his temper, he knew how angry he was and basically gave his son a timeout. Now don't get me wrong, I wouldn't do that to my two boys. But they don't compete in anything. They play computer games all day long. The other thing people forget is that Jos was naive enough to tell this story himself. We don't hear the horror stories of what went on between Lewis and Anthony Hamilton. I'm sure Carlos Sainz Sr. wasn't an easy man either. And don't get me started on Lawrence Stroll. To this day I think Lance would rather do something else. So it's the Verstappen's lack of social media skills that causes all this negativity. The funny thing is that they don't care about what people say about them, but I do. 
That's why I felt the need to make this video. Let me know your thoughts and please be kind in the comments. Take care now. Doei doei.